I'm Chris James and you're watching Healthy Alternative. Today we're going to finally be testing the fluoride content of the water that I've sun energized for the past summer, actually. It's been sun energizing for the entire summer. And we're gonna be using this device called a colorimeter, which is just a handheld fluoride tester in this case. So here is the water we're going to be using. Uh, just so you see my setup here, I've got the large clear glass jar with a cork, and that's it. It hasn't been uncorked for the past probably four months now. So let's check it out. We're missing a piece of the puzzle. You start getting healthy and you just become a better person. You need to start focusing more on the individual. This is a HANA fluorite, handheld fluorite tester. And uh, it was about $50, not super expensive. Now on this side, we've got the tap water. And on this side, we have the sun energized water. So we're going to go ahead and, and open this thing up and look at the instructions and start testing. The glass in the center is actually some distilled water I need for the test. So this is a chemical that's going to help uh, determine if there's fluoride in the water. And uh, it needs, I need to put two milliliters into these little containers here. So we're going to attempt to do that without spilling any on the table. All right, so now that I have approximately two milliliters of the uh, chemical. Now I need to create a control. So I'm gonna use the distilled water. Uh, it calls for deionized water, but if I'm not mistaken, I can use the distilled water in its place. And then all I do is I inject eight milliliters of the distilled water into one of the containers. So here's the sample, here's the control. So the machine is ready for the control, if that's what you call it. I think we're supposed to turn it upside down a couple times, get some bubbles going. Okay, and then we close the cap. And then uh, press and hold the button until the timer displayed on the LCD. It will count down prior to measurement or alternatively wait two minutes to press the button. Hopefully I'm doing this right. So now this is the actual sample. You just get a couple bubbles going, shake it up a couple times, and this should give us a reading of fluoride in the water. 0.39, I don't know how good or bad that is. We'll have to do some research and figure that out later. So now I'm going to test the our tap water. 0.24. So according to this, there's more fluoride in the sun energized water. So I decided to use some new sun energized water and test it and see what it tested at. And I got a reading of 0 0.00, which is obviously good. I wanted to retest it again just to make sure that that reading was good. And uh, I retested it and I got 0 0.02. So I'm going to go ahead and call that good. So the newer sun water, the water that actually uh, had only been out there for a week or two, was reading lower than the sun water that had been sitting out for a month. I think the reason why is because there is a fluoride that is in the in the air and the water might have attracted it uh, because the cap that I used wasn't you know a perfect seal. So the old sun water, not so great. The new sun water, much, much better, almost a zero reading of fluoride in it. 
And uh, that was definitely a surprise. But I'm excited to to do this test and maybe do some more tests in the future and see how things turn out. It's a cool little device. And I think if used properly, we can learn a lot about it. All right, so today was just a simple test. It was just looking at, you know, how much fluoride is in the water versus how much fluoride is in the water after I kind of take it through my process. I'm very pleased with the results. Had a little trouble getting used to the tester and things like that just because I didn't read read it all the way through like I should have. But uh, we eventually got that thing, the, the, everything tested properly. Um, so, so my suggestion to you all would be to do more research on fluoride, find out exactly what fluoride is, why they're putting it in the drinking water. I'm going to be linking a documentary that I really like. I think that it kind of takes the culmination of all the information and puts it in a very easily digestible format for you all. So you can see kind of going back, you know, 40 years or so, uh, where this all stemmed from, why they're, why they're putting the fluoride in the water and, you know, also look at other countries. Uh, most countries aren't fluoridated. So um, I know we kind of consider that that our water is some of the cleanest. Uh, it looks the cleanest, but as far as the chemicals and the things in it, uh, maybe not so much. And then we wonder why, you know, we do all these things. We think we're doing all these healthy things, but then we're still sick. Well, if your water is poisoning you and you take a shower, you take a bath, you brush your teeth and you drink that, and we're, we're almost, you know, 80, 90 percent water, then you could see why the water uh, plays such a big role and why it's important to clean the water out and process the water. Uh, the next video I think I'll be doing is I'll just be showing you guys simply how I process my water. So how did I get it from being, you know, the tap water, which um, I don't think that the 0.24 or the 0.21, whatever that reading was, I don't think that is actually too bad. Uh, comparatively speaking, of course, zero is the best reading that you want to get, uh, which I did get when I originally did the 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 uh, sun water from um, outside. It, it it popped up as point zero zero zero, but I didn't have it calibrated properly, so I'm not going to take that reading. I think the final reading was point zero two or point zero four. Yeah, I'll take you through the whole process so you can see how I get my water to that reading, and um, you can mimic it if you want. And I've done videos in the past uh, where I talked about the, the alkalinity of the water. So you guys can check those videos out. That's one of my earlier videos. I think it's called Distilled Water versus Spring Water. And you could see the difference in the reading for the st distilled water and the spring water and the uh, alkaline water. Uh, and I've done a couple water videos. So I'm very confident in the water I'm drinking. It tastes different. It feels different. And uh, I believe that if you do have some chronic illnesses going on, if you were to process your water this way, uh, drink as close to a gallon a day as possible, just comfortably, uh, you don't have to overdo it, that you will definitely see an increase in your vitality and your health. Uh, some people seem to think that I'm promoting this water specifically for healing. Not really. I'm kind of promote, promoting this water because it's clean. And I think that it's as close to possible as you know, we can get to the, 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 the original source of water, which would be like a spring or a river or something healthy where you could drink water uh, versus just pulling it out of your tap. So while, yes, there are health benefits, I think it's simply enough just to drink clean water. I, I mean, I don't I, I feel like that that in within itself is enough to go through this process. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, also, don't forget to check out the Facebook group. I haven't mentioned it in a while because the group grows really rapidly already. Uh, but just in case you guys don't know, we have a Facebook group. We've got almost 20,000 members on the Facebook group, a very positive environment where people are sharing their experiences. Uh, also, people do little tests like this here and there. And, you know, it doesn't always have to just be coming from me. You can you guys can start your own little discussions and things like that and figure stuff out on your own, which is what I'm for. You know, everybody kind of discovering this thing for themselves. What's the best thing to eat? What's the best way to process their food? Um, what have they done that helps them? You know, or what herbs to take, things like that. The group is a, a good place to come and kind of find out some of those things. All right. So as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.